You're listening to The Bible Guys, a podcast where a couple of friends talk about the Bible in fun and practical ways. All right, bring it home, Chris. We're bringing it Here home. Here it is. It's Friday, man. Uh, so I think of, um, I think of like, I like, uh, I, growing up, I used to watch a bunch of black and white movies. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, all the time. Well, that's just how old you are. Uh, my, my father. Uh-huh. Likes black and white movies. No, I did so, too. Um, so anyway, uh, Bring It Home is always uh, the two people are on stage dancing. Oh, uh-huh. Right? And bring then, it home. And bring it home. And then, <laughs> then one guy, and he just does this, you know, big, 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 happy, you know, this big show ending or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know, it's just really good. There so you go. That's, that's it. That's, that's, what my, I, that's, that's what I was getting at right that's there. That's where my mind went right that's there. That's right. Well, hey, Jeff, today uh, you usually introduce this segment. I am very excited because this is everybody's favorite and it's been a while. It's been it's quite a been, while. It's been, know, like, it's been, it's been like, like four minute. weeks. I know. So, uh, four weeks, man. You should be ready, ready to go. I've got so you can't fif- take the full I've got twenty-two minutes here. Fifteen things that I'm yeah. mad about. <laughs> so it is uh, everybody's favorite segment. What made Chris mad this past four weeks? No, no, no. It, this happened like this week, two days ago. Okay. All right. So it's it's the first thing that came to my mind. Um, so I was in a restaurant that I frequent often. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I'm mm-hmm. not gonna. Mention the name of the restaurant because that'd be rude, but it was BJ's. Right. And it was right next to Heritage. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Which I think. You, you give the initials. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm going to tell you I'm the name, but I'm going to give you the initials. It's BJ's. Just, 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 the, just the initials. Okay. So so uh, I order an appetizer and I am very hesitant to place an order before my appetizer comes because I don't want my food to come out and both of them. Be in front of me at the same time. Are oh. you are you with me on this? I, I understand what you're saying. Yes. Okay. So it happens all the time, and 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 by the way, I would argue and say that you know a server is one of the hardest jobs ever. It sure is. Right. Yeah. It really is. Okay. Timing so, is important. So so timing is important. So I do I do do I do understand how difficult that job is. I really do, and especially my son was a server, and he's like, Dad, you don't understand how hard it is, right? Mm-hmm. However, um. When you choose to place the order or put the order in, that's actually simple in concept, right? So you just you just wait until the person is you know pretty much done with their food or mm-hmm. or after they've gotten their food or whatever it is, right? So you just just you know that's something you absolutely have to master as as a as a, as a server. So that that part is very simple. So violating that part should not ever happen in my That's opinion right. violating oh that yeah it was a but you're, you're a, revving it revving it up it the words you're choosing now so so he comes over and he's like what would you like and i'm like can i try this cup of soup or whatever it was actually like a bowl of soup they don't offer cups so it's like a bowl of the soup and uh and so he's like okay and so i'm waiting and then he comes back over and he goes do you want to place your order and in my mind i'm thinking all this but i'm not going to say it but i'm like oh. and i said well i don't i don't want i don't want to get the food too early and he goes no no, no no i'll make sure and i go okay fine I said, well, let me go ahead and, you know, get this order, you know, whatever it is. Uh, I think I ordered a steak, actually. So then, um, so anyway, so I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. And all of a sudden, she brings out my soup, and she sets it in front of me. I'm like, great, you know, and it's like, it's hot. And, and it's actually, um, you know, not exactly like too hot, right. right? It's like almost, it's just right. It's just right. Just right. Right? So it's not too hot. So I'm thinking, okay, it's this is going to be perfect. And then all of a sudden, two seconds later, and this is the part that gets me. Right. It's not the, it's not my server. It's a runner. Right. Right. So it's almost like that person has no concept of anything else other than, Hey, my job is just to bring you this Get that food as quickly as possible. Right. And then sets it in front of me. And I'm literally taking like my third bite of soup. And, 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 and he goes, you want to cut into that for me? And I go, well, not really. I didn't say that, but I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm like, I don't really want to because it'll get even colder. Right. Right. And then, and then finally I end up abandoning the soup because I'm not going to let a steak get cold. That's right. Cold, right. Right. So I just started eating the steak and then he comes back and he goes, don't you like your soup? And I said, and, and the person I was with was my wife. And I said, well, I just had to choose which one I didn't want to eat cold. So the steak won. So could you right. go back and heat this up? And then she's like, you know, you didn't have to say that. I'm like, I kind of think I, ha- I kind of yeah, think I did. Sad. Yeah. Well, you have, you, so you were gently guiding them on how you prefer to be served. No, no, no. Because on how the be, world prefers be, because, to be well, served. Right. Exactly. Because nobody prefers yeah, that. Yeah. I keep forgetting you get upset for the world. It's on behalf of all of us. Yes. Yes. So you are correct on that one, but you have to gently guide them. Yes. Right. Make him think about it next time. Yes. Hey, we should have a little bit of a gap. Offer the appetizer at the exact same time as the entree. The whole point behind multiple 
uh, elements of a meal right. is that they're separate. Right. Right. As opposed to that should have been a soup entree and a and a steak entree, those two together. Right. But because it's in the appetizer section of the menu, it should come first. Right. <laughs> and earlier. Yes. Substantially earlier. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, so, I'm not disagreeing with you on that. Chris, I am in alignment with you on this one. Yes. Well, I, t- I got to tell you. You know I, what? I'm so upset about it. We should like make make signs and just start marching out in front of BJ's until they get it, start getting it right. Yeah. You know, make you sure. Yeah, well, how do you, what would the sign read? I don't know. How We'd have to make some slogan. Uh, uh, no, on, no entrees before the app's finished. Yeah. Apps first. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I thirst, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll, we'll work on that. That's right. So that, there you go, buddy. That's, That's right. what made me mad this week. That's, well, good. Thank you, man. We appreciate it. And the server, On behalf of all the rest of the people in the world, we are grateful for your rage on our behalf. And the server who blew it, his name's Kevin. Kevin. I'm just, Thanks, Kevin. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, you're going for it today. You were violated. I don't know the server's name. I don't know the server's name. Okay. That's so funny. (laughs) That's funny. I was like, are you serious? Did you just go there? Hey, listen, I always have a slogan, which is uh, if a person is not nice to the server, that is generally not a nice person. Usually. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Right. So I, I, I am always nice to the server, as nice as I can be. But just because I happened to mention mm-hmm. the fact that, like, hey, I had to decide which one I didn't want to eat cold. Right. You know, you know like my whole family, not just my right. wife, my whole family's like, Dad, why are you going to say things like that? Yeah. I mean, because the owner of BJ's wants me to wants say it, things right, like right. that. Right, right. The owner of BJ's wants it to be yes. an appetizer. Right. And as you're about finished with the appetizer, your meal should And arrive. so does every human yeah, in this right. restaurant. That's right. And then, so they don't bring you your, it said there, BJ's, the big dessert is the pizuki, Right. Yeah, well, I've had yeah, that yeah. once, and yeah. it was marvelous. It, yes. So they don't bring that to you at the same time they brought you your steak. Right, because the ice so, cream would melt. That's that's correct. So they need to be thinking appetizers. Right. End the appetizer, entree. End the entree, dessert. Right. So you need to think of your appetizer as the dessert before the entree. Yeah, there you and go. the pizuki being the dessert after the entree. You should coach headquarters. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to give somebody a call on the way home. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we should leave that. Yes. We've wasted enough time today. John 15. John 15, verses 1 through 17. Uh, another, it's only in the book of John, but fundamental to Christianity is this, this passage. So John 14, 15 through, uh, 1 through 17 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he pr- prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more. You've already been pruned and purified by the message I've given you. Remember, that remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. You didn't choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command, love each other. Mm. Wow. Love one another. Love each other and produce much fruit. Right. Right. Those are the two things he's saying here. Yeah. So, uh, who was the one that wrote that little, who, who's the one that wrote that little book? Um, uh, come on. It was so famous. They, it was their second book. The night before Christmas. <laughs> I don't know. On, on the, on John 15 on this, uh, it was, oh, I think it might've been Rick Warren. Mm. Uh, no, it wasn't him. 
Uh, anyway, uh, he, he, it's I have it in my office. I can't think of the author. Anyway, it sounds like it was life changing. It was. It was this. It really was. Yeah. You know why? Because um, when it says he prunes the branches, uh-huh. that word prunes, he he breaks that down. Yeah. And and he actually um, talks about how uh, there's more than one way to prune. Uh-huh. So uh, prune can mean to cut, right? To to you know to for 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 growth, but uh, prune also means to lift up. So did you know that? So, so it's actually, it was actually this word that meant like overall care. And it was, and it was, it was the two, it was the two ways to prune a branch, which is to produce, because it says the ones that produce is that he prunes that makes more fruit. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And he took that word and he said, that's a different, different word than the previous word, which, which is to cut. Uh, yeah. And he says that, um, so, so sometimes you cut a branch, which is, you know, uh, either discipline or could, could seem like it's, it's in the, in the, in the form of uh, commandments and, you know, ob- obedience and things like that. He says, and the other way is to lift up, which is a lot of times uh, gardeners know and, and vineyards, you know, uh, vine uh, gardeners know that uh, a branch will get uh, grown in the mud and, and it, it'll be stagnant. And, and so what it'll do is, but it'll be a good branch because mm-hmm. it's connected mm-hmm. to the vine and they'll take it and they'll wash it off and then they'll put it up. And then, the, and then that branch will produce more fruit. Wow! Yeah. And so, so it was, it was both the the seemingly more harsh obedience sort of angle, and then more of the um, gentle, and, guidance. And gentle guidance and encouragement kind. And, and he really wrote it from the perspective of a gardener's point of view, and and it was actually pretty sweet. Yeah. Because it, it sort of gave you the overall picture of God both challenging us and encouraging us to obey. So when I was growing up, uh, my mom and dad bought a homestead. And on the homestead, it had everything necessary that we could provide almost everything for our families, right? We grew all of our own food, all that stuff. Yeah, you said it was like a one-acre garden or something. Yeah, well, just the garden. Our our table garden was an acre. But we had had a small orchard. We had um, uh, a bunch of apple trees. We had some pear trees. We had, you know, all the, the... the blueberry bramble and the blackberries and the strawberries and the raspberries and, you know, all that stuff. But the big trees, we had some cherry trees. They never really did produce. Our soil wasn't the right kind of soil. We had a plum tree that was really great. We had some, uh, oh, a couple of plum trees. We had uh, the pear trees. And I can remember plums are great, when, when my day, yeah, they are, especially when you get them just right. Right. Uh, anyways, my dad uh, would go out in the spring and trim when he was maintaining these trees, would trim the apple trees to the point where, and I loved climbing the trees. That's always the climbing all of our trees. We had hundreds of trees on our property. So I'm always climbing the trees and um, get up in the tree, eat your fill, <laughs> you know. Kind of thing. And I can remember watching him trim the trees and go, he just ruined that tree. Right. Right? <laughs> How in the world, Dad, you just ruined our trees? And Dad say, no, they'll produce more next year. And then, sure enough, the next season had come along, and all of a sudden, this tree that had good apples last year had great apples this year. Sometimes almost too many apples, right? And it was because he trimmed it back, he cut it back, he got rid of the other stuff. Um, it, so the tree can choose to focus on growing its branches, What it is what it naturally does. It just keeps growing its branches, it keeps pushing towards the sun, basking in the warmth, putting out more leaves. That's where it put all, puts all its energy. When it puts all its energy in growing its leaves and growing its its uh, branches, it puts less energy into producing its fruit, right? But when you trim it back and it doesn't have the ability to push all of its energy into the branch growing and the leaf producing, um, it needs to produce enough leaves, certainly. It needs to have enough branches, certainly. But if you trim it back to the right size, all that extra energy will go into producing more fruit. Mm-hmm. So... The tree doesn't want to be trimmed back. The tree just naturally wants to go, mm-hmm. right? That's what it wants to do. But when the when the guy who's cultivating it trims it back right to the right place, it'll produce so much more. The apples will be bigger. The pears will be bigger. And then I also noticed after my dad trimmed the pear trees, the pears would be sweeter, mm. which is really neat. You know, so they'd be bigger. There'd be more of them, and they would be sweeter. Then, and it's because all that sap flowing isn't pushing to grow new branches. It's not pushing for new new leaves. All that all that good stuff is going into the the things. So I really view that as this with Jesus. Now later on, we stopped focusing on the apples. We eventually just want to let our apple trees go. 
Uh, now, my dad cut down the entire apple orchard and built a new house there. <laughs> so it's really weird when I pull into my mom and dad's house now. That's where I used to eat my fill and apples and uh, pears, and they're all gone now. But um, they built a house in there. Um, but for a while, we quit maintaining them. And at that point, they just it got wild. The apples weren't as good. The skin on them was always, you know, it was the speckled and kind of rough. It didn't taste as good. And then it kept, the apples kept getting smaller and smaller and fewer and fewer. And finally, we just cut them all down and built a house there when we quit maintaining them. So we need God to cultivate us. We need God. And so I, I look at my life now at, you know, I've been a believer for 40 something years. And every once in a while, I start to realize, you know, there hasn't been any pruning in me lately. Like, like I haven't been choosing it myself. We don't naturally go, you know what I need to get rid of in my life? Right. Right. But sometimes the, the, the difficult things in my life is when God decides to cut those things out. If I choose not to, God will. And, mm-hmm. and he'll, he'll prune those things. But then you said the other side is guiding, mm-hmm. putting the branches in the right place. So, yeah. And, and then the other th- side of that is y- we need to remain in him. A vine by itself is dead and won't produce anything. So, you know, um, remain in me because mm-hmm. apart from me, you can do nothing. So, um, so not everybody grew up like you. Yeah. And not everybody even understands uh, I, I would even go as far as to say, and I have no no way to quantify this, uh, but I would go as far as to say over 90% of every listener listening today to this podcast did not have your experience growing up. Oh, yeah. And and so uh, so you're like, oh, yeah, that's really insightful. I guess that is true, right? Because I'm not a farmer. Uh, you know, but think about in the first century, everybody, everybody. knew yeah. exactly what he was talking about. So when Jesus uses this, you know, illustration, uh, he says, okay, think about this. And by the way, uh, side note, uh, this is uh, just came to thought. Um, he leaves the upper room, and they're heading down the, down the mountain, you know, through the valley, and then into the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm-hmm. Right? They're they're heading to the Mount of Olives, yeah. and so uh, and so they're literally stopping in the vineyard on the way there. So this this actually most scholars believe this is at night. Right. Right. That's so he's correct. stopping at night, and and as they're walking through the vineyard, he he pauses. And he decides to teach them about what it means to remain in me, yes. right? Abide in me. That's the big. That's the big uh, mm-hmm. uh, thing over here. Abide in me. Mm-hmm. And anyway, um, so not everybody understands it. Well, I remember being a youth pastor, a pastor of high school students, and this was in the '90s or you know whatever. And uh, and I used to do this thing every once in a while called Destination Unknown. Oh yeah. And, and it was a couple times a year, three yeah, or four times a year. Too. Yeah. And, and and I would just I would just have a bus ready and they'd show up for a youth group and I'd be like jump in the bus and then they and we just head down to it do this you know really cool thing, so anyway there was this lady who owned this vineyard and I remember knocking on her door and I forgot to you know plan, uh, and and I uh, and it was that day it was that night right it was a Wednesday night or, no it was Tuesday night, and I remember knocking on her door like Tuesday like morning or something like this like, like maybe afternoon, and uh, she answers the door. And I said, hey, your, your vineyard is huge. I said, it's beautiful. I said, would you mind if we bring like 60 or 70 you know, high school students to walk through and I could just teach them and then I would interview you and you would share your knowledge on oh, yeah. the vineyard. Mm-hmm. And she goes, she said, sir, past, pastor, she said, she says, I've just worked eight hours straight, been up since before it was dawn. And she said, and we have done our yearly pruning. And she said, and so we have tied and worked all day. And she goes, I am ready to collapse in this bed. And there is no way that, that I could survive. And she was a little bit older, too. Uh, uh-huh. And I said, please. <laughs> so being this young 20s, oh, no. I know, being this young 20s person, right? Like I just had no compassion, right? right. I'm thinking everybody should have strength and, yeah, that's right. and, and that's resilience. Right. And I said, please. And she said, okay. And so she went and took a nap, got ready. Uh, that night, I, I brought these kids over, like whatever it was, six six thirty, and uh, and she here she comes, you know, like a good sport outside the house. But I got to tell you, I learned more yeah. in that fifteen minutes yeah. about John fifteen mm-hmm. than I had previously in any study I've ever done. Well, if she'd just done all the pruning, pruning it wouldn't have looked like a vineyard, right? Right. Right. You didn't have the big leaves, out, right? Right. Because she, she cut it down to just the smallest version that it would still stay alive. Right? Yes. Well, I, I got to tell you, there was there was there was plenty of pictures and plenty oh, of yeah. things that she talked about, uh, how many bushels of grapes and yeah. uh, what she did with them, and she made wine and all these different things. And I and I got to tell you, like it was just it was amazing. My mom is one of the best 
kids workers I've ever known. She's been doing children's ministry for 40 something years. Hundreds and hundreds. Many times her children's ministries would be four or 500 kids at a mm. time. Mm. Just her on stage with 400 kids. You can just imagine how crazy it was. But she's just riveting when she teaches. She's amazing. Probably best children's work I've ever known. I remember one time she, we had some roses. We didn't have a lot of fancy things, but she had a rose bush. And I can remember, uh, so I'd seen dad trim the trees and stuff. You have to do that. But my mom was trimming roses. And if you, so the, the, the people might not understand trimming apple trees mm. uh, or trimming um, uh, blackberry bushes. They'll do the same thing. You trim them down small and you get bigger blackberries. Um, but my mom was trimming rose bushes. And I remember looking at it going, you just killed them. Right. You just killed all the, so anybody who's ever trimmed roses, you trim it down to where it doesn't look like there's nothing left. Right. And, but if you don't, eventually the, that rose bush will go crazy and those roses will get smaller and smaller and smaller till there's almost no roses. Right. Mm. But you trim that down and next year it'll come back and it'll be vibrant and the roses will be more beautiful. Uh, they tend to have less disease, all those things. And so my mom sat there and she taught me this passage while she was trimming them. Mm. And then later on we went out and we cut a bunch of those roses, put them on the table. And my mom retaught that, mm. th this lesson. And I just, it's just in me because yeah. of that, right? Yeah, Apart yeah, from yeah. Me, you can do nothing. And so here's this beautiful rose that thought it had accomplished everything. When we cut it apart, cut it off the stem mm -hmm. and put it in the thing, it died. It died in a few days, right? It's completely shriveled up. And that's what happens. We can think our life is beautiful and incredible right now. Look at we're in all of our glory. Mm -hmm. And if we get cut off, right, from the, yeah. from the vine, we're going to wither and die. Yeah, so abide in me means means uh, stay in your relationship with Christ, yeah. right? Just be be in prayer, in be word. connected to the Holy Spirit, stay in the Word. Uh, do you want to you want to read the Galatians one? Well, I was just going to talk about the fruit, right? Here yeah. is my Father glorified that we bear much fruit, and what is that fruit? Galatians chapter five talks about the fruit of the Spirit: love and joy and peace and gentleness and patience and kindness and uh, self control. Second uh, Peter chapter one talks about similar ideas. Uh, being uh, moral excellence and all those kinds of things. But then Jesus is tying here both obedience and fruit together. Mm -hmm. So what are the other great commandments? He gave us love God, mm -hmm. love people. And then he gave us the commandment at the very end in Matthew chapter 28, go and make disciples everywhere, baptize them, teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. Right. So it's in those areas that we should be bearing that fruit. So you want to measure what kind of, if, if, if you're measuring hatred, if you're, the fruit in your life is hatred and anxiety and frustration and violence, well, then maybe you're not tapped into the right branch, right? So there's right. that. The fruit coming out of our life should be more. Next year should have more love than this year. Mm -hmm. And so that's why God would go ahead and do the painful things in our life to trim us back so that we produce more fruit. And that's okay. And so it's interesting. He talks about this thing right after he talks about God's peace. It's going to be okay. Whatever he's doing in your life to help you make more fruit is what he's doing. Mm. That's great. Well, hey, that's our time, and uh, it's been a good run here this week, and we will see you next week, hopefully, on The Bible Guys. 